so it's 80 degrees today and asked if he wanted to take a walk and he did he Clever. only wants to swim when he's hot and sweaty Clever girl. and guess what he's hot and sweaty and we're going swimming a little bit manipulated yeah but perhaps for my own good for his own good sunday and we got the whole place to ourselves. So we're gonna go down and swim. In the last video, Lance showed you how I get in the water. Well, this is how he does it. Yep, all in. Ooh, 10.0! That felt so good. That felt so good. good. And we're the only ones, look at this. Boom. The only ones out here and the water is so clear and it felt so refreshing. What she's not showing you is that on the other side there's a resort of about 5,000 people. Oh. No there isn't. <laughs> this fun. lake here an idea is born. We just came up with an idea for a podcast and we are marking this location and today's date which is July 9th I think. So I told Lance just to be quiet and listen. One thing about being out in nature is you never know what kind of weird creature you'll find hanging around. This guy is actually called the blind-eyed sphinx, a type of moth. Another opportunity to take a cool creature photo. Getting ready to head to our next place, Itasca State Park. Never a fun job, but it has to be done. The good news is I always stand back and supervise. Of course, upwind and from a distance. Fill up with water and we're good to go for another week. Here's how we check everything. So our battery is completely full. It recharges as we drive. Our fresh water, Lance is filling up, is one third. Our gray tank, um, is empty and that's from like the sink and the tub um, and then our black tank says two-thirds we just emptied it and those never work because it gets crud on the sensors so you can never tell you just have to tell by the number of days that you go which is usually go about one week and you want to dump it after we all got settled in, had a nice dinner, and relaxed a little, Lance and I headed out to see another sunset, one of our favorite things to do. And it did not disappoint. I sat out on the dock of Lake Itasca and saw some bald eagles going by. Got some great captures and finish catching the sunset. You can never escape the bugs here. Good news, they aren't mosquitoes. The next day, we stopped at the visitor center to start planning our time here. Here, and our campsite is here. And we're actually probably like right here on our campsite. Yep. And then this is the lake, so look at, we're seeing just this little bit. When we went to the boat launch, it was probably right here. Yep. So we or, saw the eagles. Here. No, actually it was here. Right yeah, there. saw the eagles there. And then look how much bigger the lake is. These are a couple of things we want to do. 
Mississippi Headwaters is here, um, where it starts, begins its journey 2,552 miles to the Gulf of Mexico. And then check out an old cabin. There's a sawmill. Indian burial grounds. Lots of different things here. Oh, a boardwalk. Oh, that'll be fun. So we got a map and there's lots of different things to do here. Bike trail. Six mile trail, then you can do the 10 miles along the Wilderness Drive. That we'll make sure to do. Saw this porcupine exhibit and I think it looks just like Emmy. <laughs> Don't you agree? Go on the Wilderness Trail. It goes around Lake, Lake which I've been saying wrong, Lake Itasca, about 10 miles. We're hoping to see some cool animals and views. And yes, Lance has now got me hooked on some suckers, which I haven't had since a kid. <laughs> They're good. <laughs> good morning. Itasca State Park was established in 1891, making it the second oldest in the United States behind Niagara Falls State Park. It was created as a way to preserve and protect these majestic pines that were disappearing due to all the logging in the area. The red pine was designated as Minnesota's state tree in 1953. It is also called the Norway pine, given to it from the loggers who saw its resemblance to the pine found in their homeland. Red pine grow well in northern Minnesota's sandy soils. At maturity, red pine may reach heights of over 100 feet and be more than 250 years old. For a night walk. Emmy just loves it. <laughs> We're having fun, aren't we? She had to go out for a second walk. <laughs> then Emmy and I looked at some local brochures. Daisy and I had some fun time playing with the ball. She loves batting that around. And she's pretty good. Itasca State Park has tons of trails, so we set out this morning starting with Mary Lake Trail, where we found something very interesting on the ground. Lance is our resident scat expert. And what kind of scat is this, Lance? Looks like bear poop. How do you know? Just because how their form looks like a bunch of little berries. Yeah. This one has a little After our trail walking, which we did not see a bear, we walked around and saw some of these old log lodges, which were really cool. And then we spent some more time just exploring areas of this awesome state park. I guess I got a dragonfly in my head. You know why? It's because I got tons of Emmy hair all over me and he's yeah. probably eating it. Probably. We're gonna use it for a nest. <laughs> He's still there. He's alone for the ride. And no, this is not bird dew, this is paint. <laughs> but I like the hat, so <laughs> it's part of it. Yes, it's warm. You're just sitting up there on her head. Next, we're gonna check out the old timer's cabin built in 1934. Dead lady slippers, however, one remains alive. One. My mom loves lady slippers. This rare wildflower is Minnesota state flower. They grow very slowly, taking four to 16 years to produce their first flower, and they can live up to 50 years and grow up to four feet tall. We were really lucky to see this one. Now that's some big trees. Unfortunately, we missed the 2 p.m. ferry tour of the lake. 
in this authentic Mississippi riverboat. That would have been really fun. We seem to be finding places that have lots of stairs. After a quick afternoon nap, some dinner, we headed out for our wildlife evening drive. I'm waiting for a bald eagle to come back. We just saw him on the road up here. There's some roadkill, and he was eating on it as we came up. We pulled off the road, and hoping he comes back. He continues to eat his snack. Well, he never came back, but we did end up seeing a super cute little skunk and several deer. Here's what it looks like at 11 at night. Lance is working away. <laughs> Daisy's hanging out ready for bed. Yes, that's how she sits with her legs out. Little Emmy is waiting for mom to sit back down so I can keep snuggling. Yeah. What an adorable little sleeper. The next morning we picked up a couple Amazon packages at the local post office and then headed to Walmart. What do you do on a chilly, overcast, rainy afternoon? Is you get provisions. Today was a Walmart day. Just grabbing some uh, food for the week. On our half hour trip back from Walmart, we saw a couple cool things, including these birds. She gets so excited at everything. Emily, look at her face. <laughs> look at her. He thinks she's sneaking up on him. This is her element. This is where she's happiest. She's gonna try to pet one, befriend it, or take it home. She wouldn't care if this was the front yard of the White House. She would be, she'd creep in oblivious of whatever was around her. And watch, she'll be super excited when she comes back. The disappointment, the sadness that they're gone, she looks back multiple times, and then the sheer, yep, there's a second look back, just in case. Then the excitement and joy. <laughs> this is the first time we've ever seen these birds in the wild. We found out they're called guinea fowl. These beautiful. Oh my gosh. It just goes on forever and ever and ever. And there's so many varieties. Oh, just love a good find like this out in the back road somewhere. What is Lance doing at the next campsite? Well, we could only get this site for three days and then the site next door opened for the next two days. So we have to move a few feet. A lot of work just to move a few feet. Um, but I'm gonna get out there and help him start moving our stuff and then 
hopefully the rain has stopped and we can get out and do a couple more hikes. Lance has got a new toy. Are you excited? I hope so. I hope it works. Yeah, we need a little boost. booster. It's not like top of line or anything, but I don't. I just needed like an extra bar, so I'm hoping that this yeah. does it. We're struggling with internet, and Lance needs some for his work. Yeah, so I'm just hoping this does it. Okay, fingers crossed. We'll see. Okay, see how Lance eats this more. He's so neat. Nothing on his fingers or face. And then here's me eating a s'more. It's never a pretty sight. Today, we're going to go up to the north end of Itasca State Park to the Mississippi Headwater Center, where you can cross at the beginning of the Mississippi. Right there. So... We're excited to go check that out next. As we head into the Mississippi headquarters, can you name how many states the Mississippi River borders or runs through? If you said 10, you are correct. Early explorers believe the source of the Mississippi River was a lake hidden in the forests of northern Minnesota, but which one? In 1832, Lake Itasca was finally identified as the true head of the Mississippi. So how did the river get the name Mississippi? Two French explorers learned that the Ojibwe called the river Mississippi, meaning river spread over a large area. It was so cool to be standing right where the mighty Mississippi River begins its 2,300 mile winding journey to the Gulf of Mexico. The Mississippi River watershed drains 41% of the continental United States. 15,000 miles of waterway from over 100 tributaries make up the Mississippi River system. It's crazy to think that a drop of water from right here would take three months to reach the Gulf of Mexico. So what do you think, sweetheart? Really cool. We're at the headwaters of the Mississippi. Literally starts right there, where all those people are. And this is the beginning of it. It just trickles a little bit. And we're gonna walk along it here on this path. Pretty neat, huh? Yeah. Austria? In Germany. <gasps> right on the border. You brought this everywhere. Yeah. He met this guy who had a walking stick and he collected medals from all the different areas that he took hikes. And my kids live in California, so <clears throat> a lot of California. Now we're going to go around the wilderness loop again. So it's a 10 mile um, road that goes right around. And there's some cool stops on the way. This beautiful bird that I'm taking a picture of is called the green heron. What's really unique about him is he's one of the only birds that uses tools to catch his prey. He'll drop in things like breadcrumbs into the water and when the fish go to get it, he snatches them. On our way out, 
we saw Mary Lake, and we just had to kayak it. Okay, what are we gonna do? We're gonna go kayaking. Yay! Blow up kayak. I'm not exactly dressed for the <laughs> occasion, but this lake popped up on us, and we had it with us, so let's do it. It's our first time out this year, so we're hoping there isn't a hole in it. <laughs> Especially since I'm gonna bring my super expensive camera. Here we go. Floating so far. The rain stopped in time for us to get out for an evening drive, grab my lens, and headed out on some back roads. And we ended the drive with another bear sighting. During our stay here, we also went on the State Park Bike Trail, which went through some beautiful pine areas, past some park-like settings, historic areas, and we took time to walk across the Mississippi headwaters that we saw yesterday. We're in the Mississippi. How much do you like moving day? Do you like moving day? Jeep? Going in the Jeep? How do you feel about it? <laughs> oh, I love you. This is a short one. How do you feel about moving day? Huh? Going in the Jeep? Are you happy? I don't know what face that is. Well, you look comfortable right now. We're going in the Jeep. Yeah. <laughs> Getting ready to move on from this place to five miles up the road because the state parks are full for the weekend. Ah, I didn't even flinch. I'm so used to you. <laughs> on this lake, an idea is born. Sorry, I was drowning. But <laughs> take two. On this lake, an idea is born. Oh, I did not. I didn't, you want me to react? <laughs> Stop! We're gonna be here all forever. I don't know what you're trying to do. <laughs> I'm with that. We're just gonna, we are gonna be here all the um, bum, bum, bum. Now you're lying. Bum, bum. We're gonna stop in this little cafe here. This is my natural height. What does that have to do with anything? We're not on a slope, I'm just naturally just taller.